So I want to welcome everybody on behalf of the Schiller Institute to today's event. We are still in the middle of the trip of the President of the United States, Donald Trump, to Asia, where an entirely new cultural paradigm is being molded and put into place. This is not without problems and it's not without glitches, but what's most important is that this is the culmination of a campaign that was waged by Lyndon and Helga LaRouche starting from particularly 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall on November 9th. November 10th, the next day, Mr. LaRouche first proposed a, an, a, what became and be evolved to become uh, the proposal that is now today called the One Belt, One Road Initiative. It's also called the Eurasian Land Bridge in an earlier version, and it's called the World Land Bridge in its latest version. The reason that this proposal, however, comes out of the Schiller Institute is because in Helga LaRouche's world of, th of thought, in 1983, she first formulated a way to end the then very, very live Cold War. The way she thought you should end the conflict between what was called the East and West then was that you had to emphasize the best products of all cultures in such a way that the principle of greatness and of genius that underlays every culture was emphasized as the basis for a new form of foreign and international policy. So policy would come from the poetry and from the artists of the various nations. This was directly in line with what uh, Lyndon LaRouche had been speaking about ever since 19, or the early 70s, when in a series of lectures that he delivered in this city, actually at Columbia University, he began his first lecture by quoting the poet Shelley and speaking about this idea of the poet as the unacknowledged legislator of the world, which is the conclusion of Shelley's A Defense of Poetry. So this has been a principle of uh, the various organizations that Linda, Linda LaRouche uh, organized and of Helga's conception of the Schiller Institute. I don't want to say more, I just wanted to state that and we are going to hear now a section of a uh, presentation that Helga prepared uh, for a Schiller Institute uh, uh, meeting uh, celebration in uh, Denmark, I believe. So do we have that? Well, I think Sheila would be uh, very happy um, because, you know, his, the reason why the Schiller Institute is called, Schiller Institute is, you know, I could have named this effort to establish a better relation among nations. I could have found any other thinker, Leibniz, Cusanos, uh, you know, there, there are many who have done incredible things, but I always thought that the image of man of Friedrich Schiller uh, was the most noble one. Uh, the idea that every human person could become a beautiful soul. And as I recently uh, outlined in another speech uh, in New York, uh, the affinity of Confucian aesthetical education and the aesthetical education of Friedrich Schiller are amazingly Similar. Uh, both Confucius, who after all is 2,500 years um, ago, you know, where he lived, and Friedrich Schiller, who is you know, now you know, more than 200 years uh, ago, they nevertheless came up with a very similar idea, namely that each human being has the potential to self perfect without limit, uh, to become a genius, and his definition of genius was a beautiful soul. And what Schiller meant by that was the idea that if you find your freedom in necessity uh, and do your duty with passion, I mean, not like a Kantian saying, I have to do my duty, you know, and you, you look completely uh, enraged and moral, but, but hated. Uh, but that you are joyful in, in doing what is good. And I find that quality emanated 
from Xi Jinping. I, I studied him, I studied his speeches, The Governance of China, which is a book which you should uh, read, his speeches uh, which are published there, but you can also Google all the other speeches he made. And I came to the conclusion that he is a philosopher, that he is a Confucian Renaissance person. And you know, I think that Schiller would be just incredibly happy that such a person is a head of state and that he is uh, you know, streamlining the entire Chinese society according to these ideas. Now, I'm very optimistic about that. I mean, the Western propaganda is naturally freaked out like hell. They say, oh, uh, Xi Jinping is a new Mao Zedong, even a new Stalin. He's concentrating all of this power in his hands. But if you look at it, you, you see that this is not the case. I mean, sure, it is a very centralized uh, system, but it is a meritocracy. It is devoted to the common good of the people and not only of the Chinese people, but explicitly of all the other participating nations as well. So I think Schiller would recognize this idea of having a vision for a better world, because you read his ascended letters, he says, you have to, uh, you know, do to your, you have to give your contemporaries what they need and not what they desire. Uh, you have to be, uh, the servant of your century, but not its slave. Uh, and very similar conception, saying that you have to have a vision where you want mankind to be in, in, you know, in the future. And the idea is that there is the possibility of the ennoblement of the human race. I mean, that was an idea which was coming to Confucius, and it is also absolutely the idea of Friedrich Schiller, so I think these are two very good starting points to start the debate of what is wrong with the present culture of liberalism, of everything is allowed, uh, and also the idea that art must be beautiful, because only if art is beautiful can it move the heart and ennoble the human being. And I think that that is what we actually need, because if you look at our contemporaries, they need urgently an aesthetic education. And you know, I think that this is what the Schiller Institute is, uh, is trying to do. And you, know, you cannot deny it that what you heard in the beginning, this aria sung by Lena, is more beautiful than what you can hear from Madonna. Uh, the <laughs> Madonna is the uh, you know, uh, thinking of herself as uh, she's actually the opposite of what her name says. <laughs> uh, that I need to your judgment. <laughs>